All right, we are live on Facebook and we are recording the live show with Katie Stoddard. And this is also the podcast. If you're listening, if you're watching this episode, please subscribe to our channels. Please share what you're getting out of these episodes and please keep tagging your friends and, and really opting in into this experience because it's all about sharing the best practices with coaches, consultants who want to grow their thought leadership, impact the world. And today I'm here with Katie, who is an amazing, amazing peak performance coach. And I'm not going to say it's peak performance because there is so much more to talk about. So for you who are always been feeling like, oh, I would like to be more productive, I would like to have more focus, I would like to get more hours out of my day, you will meet Katie today. And the thing is with Katie is that she has these superpowers of not making you feel like you're not worthless in terms of your productivity. She makes you feel empowered of being yourself and actually finding your own ways. And I have the pleasure to have Katie part of our academy and she's been in our academy as a really valuable star member for the last month. I love supporting her mission because she's one of a kind and I cannot wait for you to get to know her better in this episode. So welcome, Katie. Thank you so much for having me, Diane. Thank you for such a glorious introduction. <laughs> oh, well, it's all true. And I'm really, really excited to have you here. I've been wanting to have this episode with you for a while. And now we found the time to do it. So let's just right, dry, dry, get right into this. The topics of today is really how we can revisit peak performance. And I want to talk about your story as who you are. And let's go back a bit and just talk about why peak performance and how did you get into this? And maybe tell a bit about, about your story, about yourself and what you're up to right now. Thank you, Diane. This will be hard to summarize in a few minutes. But yes, well, of course. En engineering background, and I used to work at sea on boats. And then I realized I was really passionate about working with people. And this led me to coaching. And while I was coaching and I started my own business, I used to really struggle to structure my days and I found it difficult to manage my life as a newly self-employed businesswoman. Mm -hmm. And this led me down the route of productivity. So I worked a lot on how to structure your days, how to get more out of your time, how to be more organized. And then ultimately, I really realized that productivity is just a small part of high performance and high performance entails how you manage your energy, how you manage your mm. days, how you find balance. And why I'm really passionate about high performance is because it's not about burning out. It's not about working super hard to your limit. It's really about finding that balance and tapping into your potential so you can live at a high level of happiness. At the end of the day, you feel happier, you feel more peaceful. And as a bonus, you get your work done and you're more successful yeah. in your business also. Wonderful. And can you give me some examples of the type of clients that you work with and how you help them with uh, high performance, peak performance? Yes, absolutely. So I work a lot with entrepreneurs and founders and also with executives. But to give you one example, for instance, a client of mine came when he was really stuck in his business and ended up leaving, starting his own business oh. and earned like $20,000 in five weeks. So that's amazing peak performance tapped in financially but on a personal level also found more time for his hobbies worked on having this balance and you know starting as a new self-employed person after having quit his job there's also a whole transition so it can help in transition periods and i've also worked with people that are essentially just redoing their whole habits finding new rituals it's all about finding what you need to be in a place where you feel happy, but also where you're stretching yourself a bit and tapping into that potential. Because one of my fundamental beliefs is we're not happy just leading a very plain, comfortable, normal life, but we want something yeah. a bit more exciting. So if you know you can just go slightly to the next level without burning out, without pushing yourself, but just learning a bit more, it's what Tony Robbins always says, you know, yes. happiness comes from growth and contribution. So first yes. help people grow and then they can contribute also. Amazing. And why do you think it's so hard for leaders and founders to tap into that space? I think there's a lot of different things. I think there's this common misconception that you have to hustle, hustle, hustle and work yeah. extremely hard. And then they feel like they are tapping into peak performance, but essentially, ultimately, they burn out. 
So they're maybe mm -hmm. not exercising or they're not taking care of their nutrition or they're not sleeping enough hours. So they feel that they're performing well, but maybe they haven't seen their spouse in you know, two years properly or had yeah. you know, quality time with some friends. So I think what happens a lot of the time with very, very driven individuals is they go too far down the line of being super productive, but actually they forget that the main part of life isn't just to finish your to-do list or to reach yeah. all your goals, but actually to enjoy it while you're doing it and to look at the other areas of your life. I mean, people always say that when you die, you don't regret that you didn't work more hours in the office. You know, it's time spent on relationships and other aspects of your life too. So ultimately, it's a tool for your fulfillment and having more out of life. And I, I really resonate with that. And that's why, you know, I usually don't take on peak performance coaches or high performance coach. For you, but I feel that you, you cover it in a way that gives people a bigger meaning of the why. Okay, I want to be more productive. I want to have better time management of my day, my focus, my control of how I manage my life. But in the end, that's not the end goal. The end goal is to have more time with my family or having, you know, a more fulfilled business, et cetera. So I think that's it's such a beautiful way to revisit peak performance because many times a lot of feel, people feel pressured of, you know, I have to create these habits. I have to get up at 5 a.m. or I have to like, you know, create all this structure. And that pressure take away the joy of actually tapping into your peak performance. Would you say that that's how you see it or is it, could you add something to that? Yes, absolutely. And I also think that I was at some point on that side where I was trying to do everything to feel like I was highly performing. And then I realized, actually, this isn't making me happy. This is just overly pushing. So then I found myself that balance of I'm stretching myself. I am, you know, exercising more than before, meditating regularly, but I'm not getting up at 5 a.m. every day because I don't have yeah. to. <laughs> yes, exactly. You don't have to. If you want to, then by all means, but it's not something you have to do to, to consider yourself as a high performer. Amazing. And I think that's a great way to transition to your story, because as you mentioned that you went from, you know, thinking that that's the way you should be doing yourself and going towards something that is much more aligned with your own personality and your own energy and flow. So can you tell a bit more how you found a better way of actually tapping into your own peak performance yes absolutely so i think for a while i was convinced that i had to do all this tracking and measuring and i still do a bit of it but i was overdoing it because i felt this is what it's like to be high performance this is what it's like to be very productive and i could do it but it relied a lot on my discipline and ultimately it made me feel very tired and if mm. we look at, for example, the four tendencies of Gretchen Rubin, for people who know this, I saw I was a questioner, which means that I followed my own inner rules, but questions outside of rules. And questioners are very good with trackers and toggle and time tracking. And so I do have a small tendency of this. So I did work on it a bit. But then recently, I realized more that I was a rebel, which means that I don't really function like this. It's more I function on a global vision and then go more with the flow. And I always really knew this because I'm hyper creative and I do like quite a bit of chaos. So there I was trying to be very productive and do it all in boxes when deep down I'm just this very creative flow person. Yes. And once I realized this again, because I'd realized it before, but this time I accepted it. So instead of realizing it and saying, no, no, but still I should be doing all of this Excel stuff and trying to force myself in these boxes mm. and let go of it. And the way I, I still reach my goals is by having weekly goals, but letting myself do them in the order that feels right. So I have my yes. goals that are structured that I follow, like this podcast interview or live. And then I have other parts of the day where I just work on what I want. So I'll give you an example. For this week, I wanted to do my course on being hyper productive from home. And I literally did it in five hours. I did the entire course, filmed videos nonstop. But why did I manage to have that energy? Because I didn't force myself to do it on a specific time. I just said, I'll do it this week. And then when it felt right, I just filmed all of it. And before, I would have probably done something like time blocking and said, I yeah. must do it on Wednesday from 10 till 2. But maybe then I didn't feel like it. So it's, it's an interesting balance because you need to still achieve your goals for the week, still make some progress. Yes. Essentially 
for rebels and for creative people, you need to feel like you mm. still have that freedom. Like you still have yes. And time blocking only works so much when you, you know, if you overdo time blocking with all your tasks, then it feels too much like an obligation. Mm. I love this. You're giving so many listeners and, and our community the permission basically to say that you don't have to do it this way like you can put the goals for the week and then be creative within that space and uh, in our stage three program momentum which you're part of uh, most actually everyone everyone in the group are rebels at the moment and everyone that come to you know having a high performance like successful business six figure plus in they all are somehow visionary because you need to be a visionary. You need to be creative. You need to be thinking differently and to be able to create, you know, new things in this world. And I truly believe that the zone of genius is to tap into your creativity. And if you learn that you can be high performance, peak performance, you can have like your things in the schedule that are scheduled, like your calls with your clients and your podcast interviews, stuff like that, your team meetings. And the rest of the time, you give yourself the permission to actually be, you know, going different direction. And that is your superpower because visionaries, and I love working with visionaries because when you work with visionaries, you see that they're, they're sparkling, they're opening the, the energy, the joy that comes with that. And I think that's the joy is a really important part. We talked about fulfillment before, like tool to fulfillment is peak performance, is having hyper focus and learning how to work with that, but in your own way. But the ultimate goal is joy. And would you say that having this rebel and accepting the rebel in you and we're gonna put that in the show notes as well a bit for uh, the quiz that you can check out if you want to try it yourself so there's a free quiz on that um accepting that you're a rebel accepting that you need to put your own rules and you know actually break your own rules even if you put them up um in your schedule what has this allowed you to feel in your business Yes, I sort of fell in love again with my business. So I was, I liked oh. it. It was like we were friends. <laughs> I liked yes. it. My business, I still like you. Yeah, we have good days, bad days. I still like you. And then I just sort of fell in love with it all over again. So oh, I amazing. Loved every minute of the day. The whole day seems like a time vortex. I don't see it go by. I'm in flow the entire day. And one important oh. thing I wanted to mention with the acceptance part, I think this is super essential, and maybe some listeners will resonate. Is I think in my case, I didn't accept this creative chaotic side because I didn't trust that I would still get the results. Yes. So I think it's really linked to self-trust. And once you realize that actually I trust myself and if I say I'm going to do it this week or if I say my course will be done, I don't need to block the exact time I do it. Some people do, that's fine. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Do yes. And yeah. I just fix myself roughly the time this week and I trust myself that I'll get it done. And once you trust yourself, it happens. But yeah. the thing I noticed with this rebel type energy is the more I force myself, like this must get yeah. done and schedule it in and pressure, pressure, the less I want to do it, Yes. the less likely I will do it. And yeah. then the worst part is because of working so much on my discipline and willpower is most likely I will do it but with less energy, less fun, and ultimately I'll feel drained at the end of the day. And I think this is extremely common. People force themselves if they have yeah. high discipline or they're working really hard on their business, but instead of them being excited by it, it drains them. Yes, yes. This is really common. And what you're saying is basically like, I see it very often, um, and even like six, seven figure businesses I met, the founders have basically force themselves to become the, the structured, organized, you know, and really like, but they are somehow not happy inside because they are not in the creative flow, the natural creative flow. And for me, when I, when I meet them, my goal, we really with momentum in our academies, our slogan is 10x your fun. And that how can you 10x your fun in your business is by being truly in your zone of genius and not doing anything else. Because if, when you're in your zone of genius, you are in your highest service for others because you're doing what you love you're going doing it from your heart you're really like you you recorded this new course in five hours because it was coming through you you were creative you had the energy you were in your flow and when we are in our flow we are more productive there's so many studies saying that you know that when you work in your flow state 
the productivity goes up in it, it's increased drastically like really really much i don't know the numbers i'm just saying really really much but it's it's impressive and i think it's oh i love this episode so much already i think that there are people are listening and watching that have to re-watch it and re-listen because there's so many pearls and i love the way that you're giving people permission to really say there is a way and working like someone like you is allowing people to actually find that way. Because, you know, if you're thinking like you're listening and you're watching this and you're like, ah, I want to be more, pe- like I want to have a higher performance in my business, my life. But getting that help is important. Getting help to find and, you know, someone that can help you to find a way to like understand your type, how you're working and actually help you to have a better I think it's a lot about self-awareness, a better self-awareness on how do you function better? How do you, how can you focus better? How can you be more enjoy in your creativity, in your energy? I think it's wonderful, your work. I'm really, really excited for the ones who get the chance to work with you. Um, I want to go to the to another part and I want to talk a bit about you and your journey in the last, let's say, six months. I know you've, I mean, you've been able to create so much in your business. You've been able to, um, really step into your zone of genius even more even before you you were already doing it but I feel like there's a momentum happening around you and can you talk a bit about the base maybe two three insights or you know things that have happened that allowed you to really step into that in the container of our programs in our academy because I know that you know everyone learned different things and it's really about your insights your lessons what has this allowed you to do and I'm really curious myself because I I don't know what you're going to to share but I'm really curious to hear what has what have been the pearls the tips the insights that you can give other listeners that has helped you to really step into your zone of genius even more absolutely Um, First of all, yes, I totally agree with what you were saying just before in terms of it's super important to have that support. And that's why I have in your academy and also have another coach on the side. And I had another one before that. So, yes, it's always important because then it helps you to have that self-awareness, that reflection to learn from it. In terms of the academy per se, I learned so much. And I also think that sometimes you or always you don't know what you don't know <laughs> so I think yes I, began, I thought I knew about marketing and sales and I think I did but in terms of structure in terms of lead generation in terms of understanding blockages both inner blockages and potential client blockages in terms of really understanding my service and my product and how to structure yeah. it so it'd be hard to put in specific points but yes. I know that one of the things, for instance, was in terms of confidence and imposter syndrome. I never really had it so much, but like we discussed in one of the sessions, when you really challenge yourself to go to the next level, it comes up. And yes. then uh, Daria's recommendation, uh, or your recommendation was to have the sugar cubes. So to have a place where you keep track of all the feedback you get from your clients and your listeners and people you're in touch with on LinkedIn and you write it all down. And now I have pages and pages of wonderful of all yes. the compliments and insights. And thank you for this. And this course really helped me. And that was great. And this session was amazing. And, and since then, I haven't really had imposter syndrome, but I know that if I do, I'm just literally going to feed my brain all this yes. feedback and all this insight and be it's not about me or how I feel it's about the results I deliver these are people who have written these words and there's pages of them it's valuable for them so yes the inner voice the inner doubt the inner struggle that happens in life because our mind isn't perfect doesn't matter as long as I can deliver to that level and the people really get value from it so again it's focusing on them and not on you yes and that really shuts down the voice so that's just one of the things that took away months and months ago and I'm still doing daily this morning after my coaching session I went to my sugar cubes and put in all the uh, feedback that my client gave me on how the coaching has helped him so far so I think so many things I'm implementing daily that have come from what I've learned during the programs (laughs) wonderful I think that's amazing and the sugar cubes comes from an event I went to in Mine Valley called a fest and there's different uh, different versions of that that we also have done other options of it but basically what it really comes back to is taking in and receiving the art of receiving is practicing the art of receiving that when people tell you like you're amazing you're doing these amazing things and you're like yeah whatever like or it's not me or you don't take that in and then we feel like we are not getting the support we feel like we don't have people actually you know 
uh, seeing and acknowledging our work, but there's so many people literally throwing love and support and you know like appreciation on us, each and one of us in our families, in our friendships, in our in our client base. And not seeing that and not like saying that because it's not the way I want or it's not from the person I want or, you know, or it's not exactly what I was expecting. It's not the respect in their words. And it's, it's basically a gift. It's like someone is giving you a gift and saying, I'm opening up my heart and I'm telling you how amazing you are and how much you impact my life. And you're like taking that gift and throwing that away without even watching it. It's that's how it feels for me if we don't take in the compliments. And it's a big part of our practices in our academy to actually open up and receive because when you start to receive compliments you start to receive money and that leads me to the next conversation about your raising your prices and that's a big thing we do in our academies to actually help you know 2x your fees or 5x your fees or even we had people 10x their fees um helping you to really step up in terms of pricing and let's talk a bit about that why do you feel that, why did you feel that I was ready to do that? Like, why did you want to do that? And also, what does it mean to you to actually, like, who do you need to become? And how do you, how do you feel about stepping up and charging more? Why is that important? So a bit of old questions, but really, if we can talk about that as, as an idea and topic about raising your prices for you specifically, what did it mean for you? Yes, absolutely. And it's such an important and relevant topic. I feel there's a combination of factors. First of all, the more you invest in your own personal growth and your own training, so like joining the academy and also the coaches I'm working with, the more you feel like you're learning, you're growing, and you can also add so much more value to other people. Yes. So I've always invested a lot in my personal development. I've lost track of 20, 30,000 euros easily, and I'm not like a multimillionaire. It's probably like a large part due to my savings of working at sea. But because I value it so much, I also work with a Tony Robbins coach and I've done, I've done a lot of training. And so after a while, I felt all this training and all this learning can really benefit people. But ultimately, I want to work with the few selective people because I want to be able to serve them at a higher level. Now, if you charge a lot less, several things happen. First of all, you need to have a lot more clients. To, you know cover your monthly fees rent and you need to spend a lot more time you know doing sales and calls to get these clients so you have less energy for the people you work yes. with so that that was one of the main reasons i raised my pricing it was so i could have more energy and also because the sort of person that's really committed and to pay that price they get way better results so the client i was talking yes. about paid you know, higher fee than maybe other clients, but he got way better results, right? Because yes. he invested the money. So he invested it in himself. So then he really takes action on the sessions, shows up every time, gets up early in the morning, <laughs> his side of the world to be there for the sessions. And that level of commitment comes when you pay a lot. If you pay 20 euros per session, you might forget about it. You might skip yes. it. You're not going to take action. Yeah. You don't feel as committed. So it's yeah. having that level of commitment and also for myself, having that energy and the other thing I realized is because I do want to serve on you know on a global scale so you can only afford to work with a few people but then you have more extra time that you can spend on things that are more affordable such as the online course or creating content for LinkedIn and other things so it means that you get to serve at a very high level a few people but then yes. you still have energy left to help everyone else in a different way not one-on-one -on -one. yes Yes, if it's have a, lower yeah. fees, then you're just spending all your time doing one on ones and you don't have the time to create an online course. Yeah, because. yes, absolutely. Or a group coaching, for instance, yeah, absolutely. And I think it's about impact and influence. Like a lot of people come to me and ask, so how can I, you know, grow my impact and impact more people? Because Thought Leadership Academy is a lot about how can you help more people, but you don't help more people by giving your you know your last drops of energy to each and one of the people that's not what it is about it's about finding a business model that allows you to have a sustainable balance business where you can really you know just focus on your zone of genius and being able to impact 
you know, people, your community, creating content, creating, you know, different things that are creative, where you are creative, you don't like the course that you're creating right now, your life doesn't depend on it. And that it's a really different stage and different angle of, of creation. When you create to create and serve, or when you create to make money, um, and that's your ultimate, like, of course, you, you want to be able to, to make money with what you create. But if your goal is like, I need to pay my rent, and I need to get this out right now and I need clients right now the energy is not the same as I have enough I feel abundant I feel that I'm serving from a space of I have enough and my clients have my presence and I I create because I want to not because I have to would you agree absolutely yes I think that's very yeah. well summarized and not feeling that it's a, a must but feeling because you generally want to do it and the same goes in terms of having a few one-on-one -on -one clients if you, yes. know, you have five a month and that's enough for you to live off then you might take on an extra six but if you need 10 or 15 like this is actually to come back to what I learned through your academy for a long time I had this vision ever since I had my start coaching business I was convinced I needed 20 clients a month that was just I don't know I had this in my mind I needed 50 mm. and even when I changed my pricing I still saw about 20 and I was extremely naive as to how you get 20. I never reached 20 clients a month. And I just was obsessed with this idea of, ah, I just need a few more clients. If I have about 20, that's good. And it was a massive shift when I joined the academy and different things we went through to realize, actually, to get those 20, you need to spend a lot of time, you know, messaging, calling, and because people don't know you and going through that yeah. process. And that would make you burn out. And then when you actually need to coach these people, if you're spending so long on sales calls, yeah. how can you deliver to that level? So yes. one of the most powerful thing I learned was actually diminish the amount of clients, increase your pricing, then go full on with these clients, really serve them with the best of your abilities. And then with your extra time, create an online course, work on my podcast that I love. I'm hyper passionate about my podcast at the moment. I say at the moment, I'm hoping the passion will stay, but I love it. And these are the things you can't do if you're chasing 20 clients every month. And I think this is a yes. massive struggle for a lot of coaches. Hence the idea also in uh, Pivot, one of your groups, of also creating group coaching. That's not yes. really I've gone down myself right now, but I might yes. have it in the future. But that's yeah. exactly the reason also. Yes, absolutely. And I usually say that um, in, in the, for our members, I usually say that you basically need 10 clients that are amazing to have a six-figure business. If you have 10 clients that you serve at the highest level that you can serve them at, you don't need more than 10 clients. And there is a misconception we have with these online courses and like masses, you know, email marketing and bombarding people with, you know, courses and stuff that actually in the end are not really creating transformation. Like if you look into online courses, there is only three to 5% completion rate on the long courses. And I'm not talking about this, like the, the fast course that I love in terms of like one specific topic, go deep into that. But if you have like a longer training, three to 5% go through that. How many people will stay with you if they're not getting results? Where if you have in our academy, we have people staying with us for years. We have one year, two years, you know, going to the third year. And why do they stay? It's because, well, they actually have one completion rate. Secondly, they implement. Third, they get results and then they continue. So it's a really different approach. I think that somehow it completely shifts your mindset about how you serve, um, which leads me to my last question. Do you think that you become a better coach by doing this? By doing, oh, by serving fewer people or by- Yes. Me? Yes, by, by what you have done. Do you feel like you have become a better coach and a better, you know, um, do you, I know that you, you, you know, you went, we spoke about the rebel and being more in your zone of genius and your flow. We spoke about the pricing, the, how you are allowing your to yourself to kind of really choose your clients and, and really go deep, deep with them. Do you feel like can, that you're stretching your, you know, your excellence, your expertise? Are you, are you feeling that you're expanding your knowledge and the way you're facilitating coaching? Yes, that's a great question. And I think there's several ways to look at it. In some way, obviously, I've grown a lot more, learned a lot through the academy, other things I'm doing. So that definitely contributes. On another level, because there isn't this sort of pressure of getting 20 clients a month, you can really focus on the clients yes. you have, which again means you can serve at a level, another level. But the yes. third aspect that's 
non-neglectable is the fact that I'm happier and yes and calmer and more energized yeah. and whatever your job is whether you're a coach or anything a project manager anything you do if you're feeling happier and more energized this has an impact on your work so I, I don't like to use the word I'm a better coach because first no. of all I can't compare it rationally in my mind but I, just know I feel you know more energized when I'm yes busy. and I also see the results in the case of my clients that are great so yes I do have feedback that proves that yeah a combination of things has helped you know me get my coaching to the next level for sure <laughs> oh wonderful amazing well I, be, I we have been going a bit over time today but I felt that this was really uh an interview that I loved and there's so much things to learn from you and the way you're reflecting about peak performance, about uh, how to really step into your zone of genius in your business, because that's what you really help them to, to find the tools, to have time to, you know, do what they really want in either it is to be with their family or, you know, stepping more into their business and working on that. And I would love to continue, but I know that there is more, the listeners also want to go and into your your the ways that there are your different channels and kind of just explore more of your world. So where can people find you? Where can people go deeper into your world of creation that you are creating online? Yeah, thank you, Daya. There's basically two main ways. So either my LinkedIn, which is Katie Stoddard, or my website, which is the focus yes. because I'm all about focus. And in the focus B, you can also check out my podcast, the focus slash podcast, and also my Wonderful. blog. So yes. Great. And we're going to put all that in the show notes. You can go and check it out. And yes, go and check out her podcast. She has amazing guests on and she's doing some great, great shows about how you can rethink and revisit the concept of focus, the concept of peak performance. I've been really enjoying this, Kate. It has been so much fun. Thank you so much. You're a, I'm grateful for you being a part of our academy. I'm truly, truly happy for you the way you are, you know, sharing and serving and sparkling up with joy. And so thank you so much for, for being part of it and also for today, for taking the time. And, and, and thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. And everyone who listened and watched, please comment below and share what you learned from this episode, how you're going to implement that, what it has sparked in you. And of course, subscribe to our channel on YouTube, on our podcast, in our, you know, in any way where you find us, you can just type my name, you will find the, the episodes. And this is episode number 16 with Katie. And yes, I will say until next time. And thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Bye bye, everyone. And bye bye, Katie. Bye.